our next presentation. I um, actually never received a bio or anything, so I'll just have to make, make it up as I go along. Uh, maybe about, <clears throat> I don't know, four weeks ago, six weeks ago, something like that, um, I believe I was contacted by email um, by Jennifer, and she had um, mentioned that she was kind of interested in some of this stuff, or I can't really remember how it kind of played out, but I invited her and her husband Terry to come here to the shop. We just kind of re it wasn't as organized as, it, as we have it th this far, so it was kind of a mess. And, um, but we sat down, we kind of kind of talked about, uh, you know, different technologies, some of the stuff we have here at the shop. Um, you know, talked about some uh, property, off-grid living, which they have a lot of experience with. And I started to share uh, a few ideas. I never provided a picture, but I guess you can say whatever. Um, <clears throat> and so, Within, uh, I think maybe just a couple weeks or something, based on a few ideas that I that I uh, shared with them, that they were already starting to dig trenches and buy pipe and do all this kind of stuff instantly. Just jumped right on it. I'm like, all right, yeah, this, you know, we, we like to do things. And uh, so uh, she had invited me out to her place, um, but because I was so busy with the conference and presentations and all this kind of stuff, kind of took a little while. And so it was literally only maybe two weeks ago, or if even that, that we went out to uh, the other side of uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene to their uh, beautiful home out in uh, kind of North St. Mary's, and uh, saw the, uh, the off-the-grid setup, which uh, she'll be uh, going through. And um, we saw some of the works and projects, everything from wind to solar, to solar uh, electricity, solar heating water, um, how they built their home, what kind of things they've incorporated. Uh, there's a ravine with some water. They did some uh, uh, hydro uh, power experiments. And um, also I invited my friend Yari and Peter came along and uh, Peter gave his feedback on a lot of the solar battery bank stuff that is the, uh, one of the main subjects of Free Solar Secrets, which uh, basically I had asked Peter to write years ago, which was basically a lead generator for the solar charge controllers manufactured by John Bedini. And so <clears throat> since then, um, they may have not had a lot of time to go into uh, or to modify the battery bank or whatever, but she's going to be covering some of the things that she did that, you know, maybe she sees as being mistakes or things that could be avoided. Uh, but based on her and her husband's experience, you'll learn what not to do and to learn f what, what was successful that they did and, uh, you know, both the successes and um, learning experiences. And so uh, this presentation will be, so instead of 75 minutes, it'll be right about an hour or so, okay? So we should be able to still keep on, on uh, track. And right after that, we're gonna take a short break. Peter's gonna come up and, and explain the update of uh, uh, Solar Secrets uh, with some pictures of a successful uh, setup. And then uh, at some point, we're gonna, hopefully not too long in the future, we'll be able to come out and see you know, the replication of another successful setup based on those principles uh, local. So please help me uh, welcome Jennifer McMenemy. Thank you. This is where we started. It was an outback setup with uh, just a big battery for our future and just a little tiny, um, little tiny charge controller right there. Um, and that is an outback inverter going to that mate three which is an outback system so you're, you're seeing our well and some of the other stuff there but we only really had one set of panels um, one really big battery as we expanded um, we're, we're told to put our panels someplace where that you know we couldn't mess with them they'd be safe so they're up here on the roof with two feet of snow in idaho that was my core workout for several months, is climbing up this little ladder right here and cleaning them all off. And the snow is very accommodating, and right there, it picks up every single wire and rips it to shreds. <laughs> so you get to be an electrician in winter in Idaho, which is super, super fun. We took the panels off of the roof and we put them onto the ground. And they're distributed sort of uh, mostly south, but there's a few that face more west and a few that face more east. And for each set of panels, um, we put three in series, and then we put them into a, a combiner box 
so that if one goes down, you don't have your whole array go down. Pre previously, the whole row was all wired together. So when one went down, your whole bank went down. So now we can turn them off or on really easily, and they all come here into a combiner box, and then one line goes into the barn. And a nice little um, place for our uh, Christmas lights, I think. <laughs> all right, and then as I shared, they are no longer here. They are here. Much easier to service. So those are some of the things we did before we met the Brain Squad. Um, so when we started, we knew that we were needing something better. We wanted to be less reliant on our generator. Um, and we started to learn about the concept of over unity. And that led us to Aaron. And I'm, I don't have anything over unity. I'm not magic. But we did think, you know, there's got to be something better. There has to be a way to solve this problem. If somebody was to ask me, what would you change? What would you change about solar? Um, the one thing I would do, first and foremost, is properly size your inverter. That's me. Um, because what happens is if you take a shower and you use your microwave and your kid turns on the hair dryer, boop. Um, now, we do have a backup inverter that's, that we've put in to try and help with that. But you have to be really conscious about the load. And we didn't know that. It, it, you know, cause eight, it's an eight kilowatt inverter and it sounds like it can be great, but it's really easy on the, the startup, on almost anything, to knock that over. Um, I will tell you, this is our in-ground floor tubing at the beginning, before, this is like the first couple weeks we started the house. And what you see here is the tubes, and they're just PEX tubes. And I will tell you that they're, it's not that hard. Th our, our 10 year old did our floor. I'm not kidding. Our 10-year-old did the floor. I helped, too. Everybody got in and helped. Is it professional grade? No. Was it cheap? Absolutely. Um, so we did this. Um, and th so it's got, I don't know, seven or eight zones. Um, one of the things we did is in our storage room, we put it its own zone. And we found that if we turn that off, it actually doesn't heat at all, and it becomes a perfect... Um, root cellar. This is, this is grade. The, the, the greenhouse extends four feet below grade. And it's just a traditional A-frame greenhouse. Um, the peak is about 15 feet, um, but I can reach it with the tip of my fingers from the outside, if that makes sense. So we had hoped that we could use it year-round, but like this, we can't. We cannot because we can uh, use it probably three months, uh, three, three seasons, but not the fourth. And so that really limited and killed my, my, my lemon trees and my lime trees. And so with Aaron's suggestion, um, he gave us a few ideas of what we could do to make that better. And with the hope is that we'll use all of these thermal properties and all of these things about harnessing the heat and keeping the heat we have and being smart about um, airflow and use it to make this one an off-grid greenhouse which means I'm not using a heater I'm, I'll use a fan and two uh, make it so that I can use it year-round and extend what I choose to grow we're gonna move along to water and we're gonna talk call it a bittersweet story of water and I love hydro Hydro is awesome. It works things 24 hours a day. It's wonderful when you have it winter and spring. And when the sun, when sun power is not there, hydro is. And that's wonderful, especially up north, because I've got more power than I can use in, in the summer. But in the winter, I've got nothing. And so hydro rocks, but it's volatile. And nature destroys and I'm about to show you a video of what can go really wrong with hydro. So if you do hydro, this is what you will find. This is where it works. There's our barrel in the water. 
got some grates on it. The water goes in there. And it goes over the edge. And when you walk down here, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's our pipe buried underneath the rocks. And that's all the way down and around the corner and down to the generator. We created a, a wall to make a little bit of an eddy. So if the water comes down, it creates a little bit of an eddy there so that the water goes into the bucket. Okay, Han, as you can see, it's at, it's at 75. And that's right about there. It's been running it for a couple of minutes. A little spinning. Inside, it's all spinning. Good. All right, so there's the generator down there. It's got turbine, if you want to call it that. I don't know if you can see that. And the pipe that we stuck along the road, along the waterway, some of it worked, some of it didn't. But we've got this hiking path that's on the side. I was worried about the elevation, but. I think for the future use, we're just going to have to run it down this hiking trail here. And uh, just what we're going to have to do because otherwise the water is just going to keep washing it away. I guess lesson to self, don't put the pipe in the middle of the stream, huh? <laughs> I have a uh, pellet and wood stove company. And I looked at your uh, water pipe, how it went up and down along the length parallel. Uh -huh. That's exactly why it wasn't particularly effective, oh, okay. is you typically need to coil it around the pipe, mm -hmm. like a solenoid coil, rather mm -hmm. than go up and down, is because you're getting a lot of vapor lock, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, you're not getting enough contact area between okay. your black pipe and your copper pipe to give sufficient contact into the actual water pipe itself. So mm -hmm. that's exactly why your coil system wasn't particularly effective. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.